Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how to clone in Photoshop Elements and how you can use cloning to remove objects from a photo. So let's get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 for this video, but it'll work in other versions as well. Sheep seem to be popular when it comes to cloning, so I thought that's what I'd use for this tutorial. And the tool that we're going to use is called the Clone Stamp Tool. In the toolbox, it's the tool that looks like a rubber stamp. I'm going to click on it to make up the active tool. Let's go down to the tool options and check our settings. If you're using an older version of Elements, you'll find these options in the options bar located at the top of your window. Look for this box that says Sample All Layers and make sure that it's checked. If it's not checked, just click on it. Also, make sure that the box labeled Aligned is checked. I like to do my cloning on a separate layer because it's easier to fix if I mess up and it also gives me an easy way to see the before and after. So let's go over to the layers panel on the right side of the window. If you don't see the layers panel there, go up to the window menu and click on layers to make it visible. To create a new layer to do our cloning on, click the create a new layer icon. It's the one that looks like a sheet of paper with a folded over corner. Now we have a new blank layer on top of the background layer in the Layers panel. It's named Layer 1 by default. I'm going to change the name of the layer by double-clicking on the name to highlight it. And then I'll type Cloning. So we know that our cloning should be done on this layer. Because we're cloning on a separate layer, that's the reason we check the Sample All Layers box down in the Tool Options. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to sample from the background layer. Before I show you how to use the Clone Stamp Tool to remove items from a photo, I'll show you how it works. The Clone Stamp Tool works by sampling one part of your photo, sometimes referred to as the source, and then transferring that to a different part of the photo called the destination. I'm going to move my cursor over into the live work area and place it over the sheep's face. You can see that the clone stamp tool is represented by a circle. The size of the circle indicates the size of what will be sampled. Right now my circle is pretty small. You can quickly resize the clone stamp tool by using the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard. The left bracket key will make the tool smaller and the right bracket key will make it larger. I want to make it bigger so I'll press the right bracket key several times. Each time I press it, my circle gets bigger. I'm going to make it a little bigger than the sheep's head. To sample the area inside the circle, first I'll hold down the Option key on a Mac, or it would be the Alt key on a PC. When I do that, my cursor changes to a bullseye. Now I just click my mouse once to sample, and then let go of the Option or Alt key, and my cursor changes back to the circle. So that's how you sample your source area. Now I'm going to move my cursor over to the destination area. So I'm going to move it over here to the left of the sheep. And to start cloning, I just click and hold down the mouse button as I start to paint in the sheep. Notice as I hold down the mouse button, you can see the circle where I'm cloning. That's my destination. But look over at the original sheep and you can see a cross. That shows the source that I'm cloning from. As I continue to paint or clone the sheep, you can see that my source point moves in unison with my cursor. If I release the mouse button, the cross goes away. Now I can move my cursor to a different area and hold down the mouse button and start cloning again. and my source still keeps that same alignment to my destination. That's because we have the Aligned box checked in the Tool Options. To show you how that Aligned option works, I'm going to uncheck the box by clicking on it. Now Aligned is turned off, and I'm going to temporarily hide our cloning layer by clicking on the eyeball next to it. Let's create another new layer by clicking on the Create a New Layer icon. Now let's do the same thing as before. The only difference is that we don't have the Align box checked in Tool Options. I'll place the cursor over the sheep's head again and hold down the Option or Alt key. And when my cursor changes to a bullseye, I'll click once to sample. And then I'll let go of the Options or Alt key. Now I'll move my cursor over to the left and hold down the mouse button as I start to clone the sheep. 
Notice that the cross, which represents the source area, is moving in unison with my cursor, just like it did before. Now I'm going to stop moving my mouse, and I'll release the mouse button. And just like we did before, I'm going to move my cursor to a different area and continue cloning. But look what happens when I click the mouse and start to clone again. It starts cloning from the original source area, which is the sheep's head. You can even see the cross is located there. So that's the difference between having that align box checked and not having it checked. When you have it checked, it'll keep the source and destination areas the same, even if you release the mouse button and stop cloning. Once you start cloning again, they will still have their original alignment. But if you don't have the align box checked, if you stop and start cloning again, it will start from the original area that you sampled. In this case, I want aligned to be on, so I'll click on it again. And I'm going to drag that layer to the trash icon in the Layers panel to delete it. There's one other option I want to show you for the Clone Stamp tool, so I'll leave the visibility turned off on our cloning layer and create a new blank layer. The other option I want to explain is the edge of the brush. You basically have two choices, hard edge or soft edge. Notice there's a brush preview in the tool options. You can tell that I'm using a soft edge brush because the brush preview looks kind of fuzzy or soft around the edges. I'll switch to a hard edge brush so you can see the difference. To do that, just click on the preview and a pop-up menu will appear. You can scroll through the menu by clicking and dragging on the scroll handle over on the right. And yours will probably be set to the default brushes, so I'll go there. And as I click and drag down, when I get to the brush that I have selected, you'll notice that there's a light blue line around it indicating that's my active brush, which is that soft-edged brush. I'm going to scroll back up a bit because I noticed we passed by a hard-edged brush right here. See how sharp the edges of this brush looks compared to our current brush? To make this the active brush, I'm going to double click on it. Now I'll use my right bracket key to make it bigger. And I'll hold down my option key and click once to sample the sheep's head. I'll move my cursor over and click once to clone the head. See how well defined the edge of my brush is? Let's see the results of doing that same thing with the soft edge brush. So I'll switch to a soft edge brush and then size it up. Now I'll sample the head again and I'll click once right above our last example. To really see the difference between the two brushes, I'm going to make a temporary layer below layer 1 and fill it with red. Now we can really see how the soft edge example fades out gradually so that it blends into our grassy background better than the cloning we did with the hard edge brush. Later in this video, we'll see why a hard edge brush is sometimes a better option. I'm going to press Command Z a few times to get rid of the red background. Okay, now let's move on to how to remove items from a photo by cloning them out. Let's pretend that we want to get rid of our original sheep the one on the right. To do that, we need to replace it with the grass. So we need to clone grass over the area where the sheep on the right is. And I'm going to do the cloning on the same cloning layer that we used originally. First I'll get rid of this um, last layer that I created. Let's drag it into the trash. And just to get you oriented to what we have so far, let's look at each layer by itself. So right now I have the cloning layer hidden you can see the red line going through the eyeball next to it. So that means all that we're able to see right now is the background layer, which is our original photo. Now I'll click on the eyeball next to the background layer to hide that, and click on the eyeball again next to the cloning layer to make just the cloning layer visible. And you can see it contains just the sheep that we cloned onto it. Now I'll turn the background layer's visibility back on so we can see everything that we have. Before I start cloning away the sheep on the right, I want to check some things. First, I'll make sure the cloning layer is the active layer. I can see that it is because it's highlighted in blue. If it wasn't active, I could click on it to make it active. 
Next, I want to make sure that the clone stamp tool is the active tool in the toolbox. I see that it is active because it has a gray box around it. Now I'll go down to the tool options and make sure that I have a soft edge brush, which I can see from the brush preview. So I'm going to scroll down and choose one of these soft edge brushes. And I want to make sure that sample all layers is checked and that the align box is checked. Now I move my cursor over the image in the live work area and use the left and right bracket keys to resize my brush if I want to. I'm going to use the right bracket key to make it a little larger. I want to clone grass over the sheep on the right, so I'm going to move my cursor over a grassy area to sample as my source. I'll hold down the Option or Alt key and click once to sample and then let go of the Option or Alt key. Now I can move my cursor over the sheep and click and drag to start cloning it out. I'm going to stop here and let's check out how it looks. It seems to be working fine, but most people would be able to tell that this photo was cloned because it's obvious that these darker shadow areas are identical. I'm going to clone a little more so we can see what I'm talking about a little better. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Command Z on a Mac or it would be Control Z on a PC. And I have to do it a couple times because I did two stages of cloning there. So to make it look more natural, you can sample different areas as you clone and try to avoid cloning distinct areas that can be easily recognized like those shadows. If I sample too close to the object that I'm trying to get rid of, so I'll, I'll sample right next to the sheep's ear here. And now I'll move over and start cloning from that area. If I keep moving over my image, eventually I'm going to start cloning in the object that I'm trying to clone out. Especially when you first start cloning out an object, don't drag for too long before picking up from a new source. So I'll undo that. I'm going to go down to the tool options and switch to a hard edge brush. This is something you'll have to evaluate for each photo. When I was putting together this tutorial, I started to clone in the grass using a soft edge brush, and the results were kind of blurry. It depends on the type of area that you're cloning and how often you pick up a new source area. If you just pick up one or two samples like we did when we duplicated the sheep, a soft edge brush usually works well. I'm going to resize my brush with my right bracket key and now I'm going to go over the whole thing and clone out that sheep using my hard edge brush. And again, the technique is still the same. I'm uh, taking lots of different samples from different areas of the photo. And I like the results I'm getting using this hard edge brush. I don't have that soft blurry look that I was getting before. And I see some repeating going on here, so I'm just going to try to get rid of some of those repeating areas. You don't want to give away that you've done any cloning on this photo. So I think that looks pretty good. We can easily check out the before and after just by turning off the visibility of the layer that we cloned on and that's our before, and then if we turn the visibility back on again by clicking on the eye, that's the after. Well, that wraps up this video on how to clone objects out of a photo with Photoshop Elements. Hopefully it gives you a good basic understanding of how you can use the clone stamp tool in Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.